So what's going on? Welcome to this Effortless Phrasal Verbs component. This is the live episode, the free portion of this component of Effortless Phrasal Verbs. This component is going to be all about phrasal verbs that go with the particle with. Anyway, I'll give you guys a few minutes to show up, say g'day. Um, let me know if you can hear me okay. Just make sure, give me a thumbs up or a love heart if you can hear the microphone okay. And if you can, please like and share the video as well because it'll bump up the video um, in Facebook's feed. Anyway, Patinka, how are you going? Makram, thank you for showing up, mate. I hope you're going well, although it's not morning, it's afternoon here. Um, I'm at my parents' place, so that's why the surroundings are a little bit different. We've got like a green wall, bookshelf over here, all sorts of different jazz. <clears throat> and I just have to wolf down dinner. I was eating dinner, um, <laughs> waiting for dad to cook dinner. So he's cooking like a chicken roast. And my girlfriend Kel's here, so she's been hanging out too. But we were having beers, drinking a bit of a chicken roast with roast vegetables to give you an idea of Australian food, <laughs> Australian traditional food. So it was really good. How are you, Rocio? Um, what have we had? We had a roast chicken, which was stuffed. We had um, roast potatoes, we had roast, I guess, carrots and asparagus and then I had some, I think, Portuguese chicken sauce that went with the whole meal, so it was really good. Anyway, sorry for rabbiting on, I'll get into it in just a tick. I'm just going to give the event a quick share. Again, give me a thumbs up, you can hear me okay, the volume's all good. I'm always paranoid, I'm always worried that when I do these live lessons, I'm going to forget to plug something in or to put the microphone on like I have in the past. And um, yeah, so that's why I'm always asking you guys, tell me, tell me, tell me, am I plugged in? Am I plugged in? Anyway, okay, let's get this going. I hope you guys are having an amazing day or amazing night, amazing morning. Jenny, how are you going? Yeah, Patinka wants the recipe from my mum's Christmas cake. So I guess, yeah, to tell you a bit about that, my um, girlfriend Kel and my mum were cooking a cake yesterday. You might have seen a little video that I put up about this cake and it's the traditional Christmas cake. It's probably traditional in um, Britain as well, but it's full of fruit, sugar, butter and I think mum put a whole jar of uh, fig jam in there as well and it takes four and a half hours to bake. Four and a half hours. So it was going for ages, it was insane. Anyway, have a drink. Um, Alright, so we'll get into it guys. I'm just going to be a talking head for probably about 25 to 30 minutes as I go through this component. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, and I'll try to get them at the end of the episode. It's probably better if you save the questions for the end so that they don't get lost in the comments section down here because if there's too many comments, they'll disappear to the top and I'll only answer the most recent ones. But I'll try to do that at the end, guys. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into um, <laughs> this component of effortless phrasal verbs. Alright guys, welcome to this component of Effortless Phrasal Verbs. Today we're going to be talking about the particle with. The particle with. So with is a particle that's kind of similar to other particles like of and like to, where there are many, many, many different meanings. We had this with by as well. There were lots and lots of different ways that this particle can be used in conjunction with verbs, in conjunction with nouns. And so today I'm not going to go through a list of these sort of categories of where this, this particle kind of fits in. I'm just going to go through different phrasal verbs and describe, um, I guess they're the most common phrasal verbs, how I would use these phrasal verbs. So basically, most commonly, the phrasal verb with, as in two things together, or at least one thing with a number of other things, it means to accompany something or someone. That's the most common meaning of with, right? So like, I'll go to the shops with my family. I like to drink soft drink with my dinner. So it's these two things or one and more things combining together, okay? So as I said, I'm going to go through all these different phrasal verbs. These are incredibly common ones that I use 
all the time and I'm just going to discuss how I would use these, okay? So let's get into it. So the first one is come up with something, okay? Come up with something. And this is to generate an idea, to create an idea in your head. So how did he come up with that idea? If you're sitting there and you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, and then suddenly you create this idea in your head, you've come up with an idea. You might come out with something. To come out with something can mean two things. It can mean to remark, to remark, so as in, he came out with a mean comment. He came out with an idea. It came out of his mouth. He came out with that thing. And it can be just generally to comment or say. So you might tell someone, um, just tell us what happened. Come out with it. Say it. I want you to just say it, okay? Come out with what happened. You can side with someone. So if you side with someone, you imagine... You know, this is one side over here and this is the other side. You might have two sides in a battle or a fight. So if you pick one of these sides, like this, you've chosen this side, you've sided with this side. So it is to take someone or something's side, to pick a side of an argument or a dispute. So if you were with your wife and she was arguing with someone and you took your wife's side, you have sided with your wife. So I'm going to side with my wife in this argument. I'm going to side with my wife. You can play with something and you can toy with something. To play with and to toy with, okay? And these mean, I guess they're the same thing and they have several different meanings. So you could have to tease someone, to tease someone. So he teased his brother toying with him. He was toying with his brother. Um, you can play with your brother as well if you were joking with them. So I'm playing with my brother, I'm teasing him, I'm joking around. Or we could say you could do something for fun. So imagine a cat is toying with a mouse. He's toying with a mouse or he's playing with a mouse. Um, and it could also be about thinking about something, right? So you could be toying with a new idea or you could be playing with a new idea. So I'm toying with the idea of traveling overseas. I'm playing with the idea of traveling overseas. So to think about, to do something for fun or to tease someone, to play with and to toy with. Something, this one's hard to sort of say in the infinitive, but do with something, to do with something. And that is to be related to or connected to something. And this is usually said in the negative. So you might hear someone say, they might say something and you might say, what's that got to do with anything? So that's like, how is that related to anything? How is that connected to anything? What has that got to do with anything? But you'll often hear this in the negative where people say that has nothing to do with anything. It's got nothing to do with anything. It has nothing to do with what I said. It has nothing to do with it. You can be with someone, okay? So to be with someone is to be in a relationship with a person. So I'm with my girlfriend. That girl's with her boyfriend. These two are with each other. So to be with is to be in a relationship with someone, okay? She's with her new mate now, so back off. She's got a guy. You can play along with something or you can go along with something. This is to agree to follow an idea, okay? So, imagine you're playing a practical joke on someone and someone just comes along and they see what you're doing. If they play along with you or they go along with you, it's that they agree to take part. They follow this idea. So, they're joining in and they're playing along. They're going along, okay? He played along with the practical joke. And you could go along with an idea. So if someone had an idea to do something and you sided with that person, you went along with that person, you played along with that person, it's to sort of go along with that idea to agree to follow it. You can take something up with someone. So this is usually used when you're complaining about something. So you could have a problem with someone, you've had a fight with someone 
And if you take that up with them, it's that you want to discuss this issue, you want to complain about this problem, probably to reconcile it, so to sort it out. So imagine I went to a hotel and the sheets were wet or something, they hadn't been dried out properly. If I had that issue, I would have to go to management and take it up with management. So I go to management and I take up my issue with them, okay? So again, that's sort of, I go to them, take up the problem with them. You could make do with something and that is to settle for something. So if I was someone who didn't get much food or I didn't get a lot of, I guess, money from work, if I make do, it's the idea that I have enough to get by. So I can do what I need to do, I can pay for my bills, I can feed myself, I can make do, okay? To make do with something or just to make do. I'm making do with the money that I make, I'm making do with the food that I have. You can ask someone, I guess quite often, how can, how can you guys live with yourselves? So this would be the idea of how do you tolerate yourselves and it's usually again associated with something negative. So if someone murdered someone, you might say to them, how do you live with yourself after killing someone? So how can you tolerate existing? How can you live with yourself having done that thing? You know, imagine you've committed genocide. You're a dictator who's committed genocide. Someone might ask him, how can you live with yourself after you've done that? How can you tolerate being you after that horrible thing that you've done? How can you live with yourself? Similar to this one, also meaning to tolerate, to put up with someone. So if you put up with someone, that is to tolerate that person. And this is a phrase of verb a lot of people have trouble with because literally these words don't seem to make much sense when you put them together. To put up with someone, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of abstract. But to put up with someone is to tolerate, so she puts up with her annoying brother. She tolerates her annoying brother. You can keep up with someone or keep up with something and that is to stay level with that thing. So imagine you are a runner in a race, there's two of you, there's a guy in front and you're trying to keep up with him. So you want to stay level as you guys are running, you're running really, really fast to catch up to him because you want to keep level with him, you want to keep up with him. But we can use this to also mean to be knowledgeable about something, to learn that information, to stay up to date with information, to keep up with the news, to keep up with information. So it means, yeah, to stay knowledgeable, to stay in the know. So he keeps up with the latest news down under in Australia. You can catch up with someone. So if you catch up with someone, this is to see a friend. So I'm going to catch up with some mates this weekend. Did you want to catch up for coffee later today? Let's catch up. Aside from just meeting someone though, It can be similar to um, keep up with, catch up with, it can be about information as well. So I've got a friend, Mart, who lives in Estonia, haven't seen him for a while. If I caught up with him, that could mean that I met up with him. If I kept up with him though, that would be the idea of I kept up, I learnt all the information and I could say I caught up with him, so I saw him and then I caught up with his news, so I learnt all about everything he'd been up to. Um, And it can be similar to keep up with where you meet someone, say, in a race. So this one, the person's in front and you're trying to catch up, you're trying to catch up and then you catch up with that person. So you get level with the person. You can get along with someone and you can get on with someone. So to get along with or to get on with a person is to have a good relationship with that person. So these two are thick as thieves, they get along with each other like a house on fire. They get on really well, they get on with each other really well. They get along with each other really well. You can go with someone or you can go with something. So firstly, obviously, that is to join someone and then go somewhere. So I might go with my dad to the shops to get a drink. I might go with my friends to the beach to catch a wave, Um, but it can also mean to go with something, it can mean to match, okay, to suit. 
So I might have a pair of socks that go really well with my pants. So they're the same color, the same fabric, the same, they suit each other really well. They go with each other, okay? I might have some shoes that go really well with my jeans, okay, to go with. You can make out with someone or you can hook up with someone. To make out with someone means to kiss someone. So to make out, you know, you might go to a pub and see two people kissing in the corner. They're making out with each other. We could also use to hook up with each other to mean form a relationship. It could be short term, just that night, or it could be permanent after that. But if they hook up, it's kind of like they've been connected. So they hooked up, you know, at a location, a party or a pub or something. They hooked up at a party together. He hooked up with her. You can get something over with, to get something over with, okay? And this is to finish something, usually something unpleasant. So I just want to get this over with. Maybe I have an operation or I have to go to the dentist. I might say, I just want to get this operation over with. I just want it to be done. Let's hurry it up. I want to be finished with this operation. You can split up with someone. And you can break up, break up with someone, and that is to end a relationship, to break off a relationship. So you break off something, you break up with someone, okay? So you break off the relationship, you break up with a person. So she split up with her, her boyfriend after they had a huge fight, and um, he broke up with her because she was really nasty, okay? To do away with something. This one's a cool one. To do away with something. So to do, I guess that's, you know, carrying out a task. Away, creating distance, separation with a thing. So you're doing away with this thing, getting rid of it, okay? So it means to get rid of something. I'm doing away with this thing. This is kind of used more officially, I think, than say in common language. You might hear someone say, the government did away with this new law or this outdated law. You know, they've made a change, they got rid of it, they did away with it. You can do with something or could do with something. This one tends to be used conjugated. We wouldn't really, I guess it would be like to be able to do with something, but we wouldn't use it in the infinitive. Um, And it means to want, to need, or to fancy something. So it's like you desire that thing. So this room could do with, say, a change in paint color. If the paint was old, it's starting to rip, it's starting to tear. I might say, you know, mum, dad, you need to paint this room. This room could really do with a new coat of paint, okay? To do with something, to need, to require, to fancy, etc. You can get away with something, to get away with something. And this is to escape something. So, usually a punishment for a crime, right? So... Imagine that you uh, committed murder or you committed assault and you were never caught, you got away with it, okay? So you run off, no one caught you, you were never held responsible for this crime, you got away with it. You just, you disappeared, you went away and they never caught you. So the man got away with the crime. Similarly, you can make off with something. So this time imagine you have robbed a bank and you've taken the money, the loot, and you've run away. You got away with the crime of robbing, but on the scale of that scene, you made away with the loot, or you made off with the loot. We can probably use away there as well. He made away with the loot, he made off with the loot. You can part with something. So this might be something that you might use more often in the negative too. I don't want to part with something. Um, So, this would be to give something up or to let something go, okay? So, to part is that idea of separation. If I didn't want to part with, say, this mug, it's that I, I don't want anyone to take it from me. I don't want to have to part with this mug. I don't want it to disappear. So, I don't want to part with my beautiful surfboard is the uh, example sentence that I have here. What else have we got here? You can finish with someone or something and you can be done with someone or something. 
This one's pretty obvious, okay? So it would be to stop using a thing. If someone needed to come into this room and use the room, I might say, yeah, it's fine. I finished with this room. You can use it. I've, I'm done with this room. You can use it. If I was using a computer, imagine I'm at a library, using a computer, doing my research, doing some Aussie English stuff, and someone comes over and taps on my shoulder and says, G'day mate, do you mind if I jump on this computer and use it? If I'm finished, completely finished, I've stopped using it, I might say, I finished with the computer, if you need it, go for it. Or I'm done with the computer, if you need it, use it, it's all yours. But we can also use finish with and be done with to mean like end a relationship. So if I had a friend and we had an argument and it was so bad that I never wanted to see that person ever again, I'm done with that person. I've finished with that person. So that person and I are no longer friends. The relationship's gone, okay? So to finish with someone, to be done with someone. You can fall in with someone. And this will be used often for fall in with the wrong crowd, okay? A crowd of people is a group of, of people and it's kind of used as a way of describing a group of people that are friends that tend to be bad, okay? So if you fall in with, I guess you imagine the crowd is here and you've fallen in the crowd with the people in the crowd. It is begin to socialize with these people and it's usually bad people, okay? People that you shouldn't be socializing with, whoever's, you know, making that judgment. Maybe your mum might say, oh, my son's fallen in with the wrong crowd, these guys are a bit dodgy, it's, it's better he avoids hanging out with these people, so I wish he wouldn't, um, yeah, he's fallen in with this crowd and I wish he wouldn't. So he's fallen in with a bikey gang, okay? Imagine a bikey gang, a group of, say, um, outlaws or criminals in a bikey gang. You don't want your son involved, so he's fallen in with the wrong crowd. He's fallen in with a bikey gang. You can have it out with someone. To have it out with someone would be to try and attempt to resolve a, dis a, disp a dispute. Oof, tongue twister. To attempt to resolve a dispute. A dispute. Oof, what am I doing? So. This would be doing it by confronting someone, okay? So you're wanting to attempt to resolve a dispute. Why am I saying dispute? <laughs> dispute. I've been doing too much Portuguese recently, guys. I'm gonna start that again. <laughs> you can have it out with someone, guys, okay? And this is to attempt to resolve a dispute by confronting someone. So to confront someone is to like go up to someone and you're trying to resolve an argument that you've had, some kind of dispute. So the married couple finally had it out with each other. So they have an argument, they try and resolve it all, they're having it out with each other. You can go along with someone or go along with something. And literally this would be like to join someone, to go somewhere. So I went along with my friends to the beach, I went along with my friends to the movies. Um, if you want company tomorrow, I'll go along with you to the movies. It can also mean, though, to consent to something, to agree to something. And it's usually reluctantly, like he didn't really want to do that, okay? Or he was sort of taken in and it just went along with them. I get, yeah, it's hard for me to define it. But joined them without really wanting to, okay? So, although he didn't want to, he went along with the plans. So, it's kind of like there's reluctance in there, but you still went along um, with someone or with something. You can go through with something or follow through with something. So if you go through with something or follow through with something, that is to complete a task despite that task being um, difficult or despite you not really being willing to do the task, okay? So despite not wanting to, he went through with his promise or she followed through on her threat when the employee misbehaved at work. So she fired the, the employee, she followed through with her threat. She did what she was gonna do, she completed that task. You can blend in with something. This is a good one, to blend in with something. So that is to camouflage with something um, or to look like the things nearby. So imagine my face was green, the walls behind me are also green. If that were the case, my face would blend in 
with the background, with the walls. Um, a stick insect, you might know a stick insect, those long thin insects, the animals that look like sticks. Those things use camouflage to blend in with tree branches. So they want to appear to look like the background, like tree branches, as a way of avoiding being um, eaten by other animals. So they blend in with the tree, with the branches, with the sticks, with the twigs. Here's a really good one. You can screw something up, oh sorry, not screw something up, you can screw around with someone or something, you can stuff around with someone or something, you can mess around with, you can fool around with, you can muck around with, and the rude one, you can fuck around with someone or something. Those are all synonyms for exactly the same thing, and it effectively means to play with something, whether literally, or maybe you're teasing the person, you know, um, so she played around with her hair. So she's sitting there doing this with her hair. She's, you know, kind of playing with it. She's screwing around with her hair. She's stuffing around with her hair. Messing around with, fooling around with, mucking around with. And if we want to get rude, we can say she's fucking around with her hair. Okay? But we can also use it to mean behave in a silly way. So imagine that there was a kid in the garden here outside my house and he's just um, being silly in the yard, you know, throwing rocks, playing with toys, doing stupid things. He is screwing around with the rocks in the garden. He's stuffing around with his toys in the garden. Um, he's fucking around with all of the sticks and trees in the garden. So it's a really good one. You're going to hear those all the time and it just adds a bit of colour to your language. And remember, if you want to make it rude, use fuck. If you're in a formal situation, do not do that. But if you're in with friends, chatting with them, and you kind of want to escalate the intensity of what you're talking about, or you want to be a slightly bit ruder with the person you're talking about, you can use the word fuck in fuck around with something or someone. All right, now let's go through a few expressions, guys, and we will finish up for the day. So, you can get away with murder, okay? Murder is where you've killed someone, however you've done it, and it's illegal. It's not self-defense. It's not manslaughter. It's murder. If you get away with murder, this is to succeed in doing whatever you want uh, without being punished for it, okay? Without suffering any kind of disadvantage for doing that thing. And people will often say this about children who have parents that allow them to do whatever they want. They might be running around screaming. They might be stuffing around in my yard. You know, imagine the neighbor's children came around and they started playing in my yard, screwing around. Maybe I might say they were fucking around if they were tearing the bushes out. Um, and I might say, why do you let your kids get away with murder? My neighbors always let their children get away with murder. They allow them to do whatever they want and they don't get punished. This is just they get away with murder. It's really annoying, okay? To be caught with your pants down, that's a good expression, okay? To be caught with your pants, you know, the stuff that I've got pants on here. If I was caught with my pants down, it's it can be used literally. If someone walked in on you and you had your pants down, whether you were, I don't know, changing your clothes, maybe you were in the act of having sex with someone. You could use it literally like that, but it means to be caught in a vulnerable position or situation. Figuratively is where you're going to hear this the most. So it's where someone catches you doing something you shouldn't be doing or that makes you look bad or that is, yeah, a vulnerable uh, situation or position. So imagine you're out at lunch, um, you're meant to be working, but you've taken a long lunch for two hours and you think it'll be fine, but then your boss comes into the restaurant where you're eating and he sees you. You were just caught with your pants down. You've been caught in a vulnerable position because he knows you should be working. You were caught with your pants down. So you'd be like, oh, I didn't get away with it this time. He caught me and I didn't get away with it. I got, I got caught with my pants down. You can come to terms with something, to come to terms with something. And you can come to grips with something. Both of these tend to mean the same thing. You could use them interchangeably. I think I would. And it means to come to accept something. So usually something like a new and painful 
difficult event or situation. Um, it could also be to reconcile yourself to doing something, so to coming to accept something. So she had come to terms with the tragedies in her life. So imagine a woman's uh, had a car accident, she got paralyzed, she's come to terms with it means that she has come to accept what's happened. The poor thing, she's become paralyzed in a car accident, but she's come to terms with it and now she's going to live on, she's going to continue to live and kick ass, okay? To be cooking with gas, this is a good one, I love this one. Now we're cooking with gas. I would hear my grandfather say that all the time, usually because he was making a joke that he'd just hooked the gas up to the stove that we had at uh, the farm where I used to go. He'd connect it up and he'd be like, oh Pete, we're cooking with gas, because he literally is using the gas to then cook. Figuratively though, this is for something to be functioning particularly well, okay, or effectively. So, and maybe you're achieving something substantial, something really good. So, we have updated the software on our computer, now we're cooking with gas because everything's functioning really effectively. Everything's improved, the situation's improved, now we're cooking with gas. Um, maybe we go somewhere, we drive up the coast of Australia, um, we're checking out all the beaches looking for good surf, we're surfers, we want to go surfing. Beach after beach has horrible surf and then finally we come upon, we find a beach where there's amazing surf. I might get out of the car, see the surf and say, now we're cooking with gas guys. The situation's improved, let's get in the water. The very last one here guys for the day is to have a bone, a bone, you know, the I guess it's an organ inside of my arm that is um, incredibly strong but brittle. You can break a bone, but that's a bone. To have a bone to pick, as in to pick is that or this, to have a bone to pick with someone. To have a bone to pick with someone. So this is where you have a grievance with someone, you have an issue with someone that needs to be talked out or it needs to be resolved. So mate, I've got a bone to pick with you. Come with me and let's have a chat. Let's sort this out. Let's resolve this grievance. Let's resolve this issue because I've got a bone to pick with you. This is one you're going to hear everywhere. So yeah, definitely recommend using I've got a bone to pick with you and it is when you have some kind of issue that needs to be resolved. I've got a bone to pick with you. Anyway guys, that is it for the day. That's all we have with the phrasal verbs that go with the particle with. I hope this episode helps guys. Make sure you go back, review it all and learn to use the particle with effortlessly like a native. I'll see you in the next one. Good job guys, good job. Thank you so much for staying for the whole um, episode. I hope you're all going well. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down the bottom here in a comment and I will try and answer them as best I can. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that guys and then after that, I might head off and get on with my evening. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a great evening and I hope these episodes are helping. I know phrasal verbs are a real pain in the butt. The basic advice that I would have for all of you guys who are listening to these episodes, especially on the podcast or maybe watching them on YouTube, don't worry too much about trying to memorize all of these phrasal verbs or trying to memorize how to use every single one of these particles. I would just keep exposing myself again and again and again to this content and then trying to use it when I speak. That would be my, my advice for how to use this content um, sort of passively, okay? So that you at least recognize it when you hear it, but then you're going to have to get out there and actively use it to remember it when you want to speak. And then also, obviously, I recommend that you sign up for the Effortless Phrasal Verb course, guys. The link's in the description. You'll save $13 if you sign up today through that link. Effectively, what you're going to get is a whole series of lectures like this with this video put up in the corner. And then you get a slideshow with pictures, with example sentences, and with each of the phrasal verbs that I go through listed out, okay, so that you can better study. On top of that, you'll get a transcript with every single phrasal verb that I've said, every single phrasal verb that's passed my lips. 
during this episode. I define them, I give you um, some examples as well so that you can better retain all of that information. So go sign up guys, it's only $97 for now. When the whole thing's complete, it's gonna go up, but get in there, invest in your understanding of phrasal verbs and learn to use them naturally, guys, and effortlessly. That's the whole point. You're not trying to remember them off by heart, you're trying to learn to get a sense of how to use these naturally like a native speaker. I never went through and learnt them uh, one after the other, okay? So we've got some questions. Chow wants to know to belong to and to belong with. Okay, if something belongs to me, it's that, say for example, this cup is mine. It belongs to me, okay? I am the owner of this cup, it belongs to me. Maybe I bought it, whatever. It's mine. If something belongs with something though, that is that they go together. So imagine that these were two of the same of, of this mug. <clears throat> imagine that I had two of these. I could say they go together, they belong together, okay? So they need to go with one another. They belong with each other, okay? Because they came as a set, maybe they go with each other because they match, they're the same color or the same design, maybe slightly different colors, but that's the difference. Belong to is that I own the thing, it's mine. Belong with is that it goes with, it um, suits, it matches something else and they go together. So, what's something you buy two of? Hmm, I guess, you know, imagine you get two pairs of glasses, for example. These two lenses go with each other, they belong with each other. So, if I had a whole heap of these lenses that I was sifting through on the ground and I found them and they were the same, I, I'd say, oh, they belong with each other. With the effect from. What do you mean by that question, Nav? With the effect from. Let me know. See if you can form a question with that and I will love to answer it. Um, thanks for the lesson. No worries, Reno and Marie. Reno and Marie, thank you so much for the postcards. Again, guys, I really appreciate that. Um, Chow, you're welcome. It's my absolute pleasure. Lima, how are you going? You've got a question as well. Do we get quizzes with the Effortless Phrasal Verbs course? Not yet. Not yet, guys. I will go through, or at least I'm planning to go through after I've finished creating all this content and then I'll make all these little quizzes that go with each episode. I just haven't had time to do that yet, but I know that that is going to be very, very helpful for you guys. So, I promise that I'll do my best to do that as soon as possible. There's only, I think, two more episodes of the Effortless Phrasal Verb series, at least of particles, to come out. I might go and investigate a little further to see if I've missed any particles but I think I've got the particle of and the particle to left to do. And those ones are difficult because they're so broad. Like with the definition of to, I mean, you guys will know this, to and of can be used in thousands and thousands of different sort of collocations and, and ways, you know, it's very confusing. So I still have to go through and work out how best to teach those. <clears throat> I think I'll do them like this episode though, where I just go through very, very common phrasal verbs that go with of and go with to, okay? So, but yeah, anyway, long story short, I will try and do those quizzes as soon as I can. Okay, so nav, separate the wheat from the chaff. That's a good, ex that's a good, um, a good expression, mate. Separate the wheat from the chaff. That's kind of like to separate the good stuff from the bad stuff. So, I guess you would imagine that if you were trying out a bunch of kids to play in a soccer team, so you've got a thousand children or a thousand players and you need to sort out those players, you need to separate those players into the best team and then all the other teams. If you're separating the wheat from the chaff, that is like, I think from the top of my head, the chaff is kind of like the stuff that goes around the wheat or the extra stuff. So the wheat's the bit that you want to take aside for you to eat and the chaff you want to throw away, so you want to separate those two things, the good thing, wheat, from the bad thing, chaff. So you can use that expression to say that you want to take the good players, in this example of um, soccer players trying out for the team, you want to take the good players away from the bad players. So you want the best players separated, you want to separate the wheat from the chaff, okay? Anna, I'm so glad you liked the episode, thank you for coming. Nav's got another question. There's been a rise in the bus fare 
with the effect from the beginning of... Ah, oh, okay. <clears throat> that's a collocation. And that's a bit of an awkward one. I'm not sure I would use it that way, but the sense there is that I think it starts at the beginning of January. So, there's been a rise in the bus fare. That's the price of a bus ticket. It's increasing with the effect from the beginning of January. It's a bit awkward, but I think that just means it starts at the beginning of January, okay? So, the effect would be when it begins. So, that, that fair price. The increase is going to occur at the beginning of January, okay? Lima, it's a pleasure to see you again, Smithson. It's Smithson, so there's two S's. There's no th, th in there, and we actually took that out originally. So, I think that my surname is Smithson instead of Smithson with the TH. And so, people often ask me if I'm Scandinavian because I think van der Smithson is a Dutch name, but we're actually British. My family's British, and I think either someone who was writing our name down misheard it. They didn't hear correctly that it was Smithson, or our family decided they wanted to get rid of the TH because Smithson is a very sort of awkward thing to say, Smithson. And so, they decided to start writing it with just two S's. That's the story, anyway, but behind how I got the surname Smithson instead of Smithson, which means son of Smith. And a Smith was someone who worked with metal, creating, say, horseshoes and weapons. That was a blacksmith. Leandro, thanks for coming as well, mate. Nav, ah, active guy. Thank you too, mate. Um, if there's no more questions, guys, then I might leave it at that, and I will talk to you later this week. Remember, if you haven't checked it out already, jump into the Aussie English classroom as well, guys. That's completely designed for anyone and everyone wanting to learn Australian English or just English English more generally, but get in there and give it a go. It's one dollar for one month, guys. You, you can try it, you know. It's, it costs barely anything. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe at any time, but this is how I make a crust and it's how I can best help you to upgrade your English as fast as possible. So, get in there and give it a go. And also, grab this course if you're having trouble with phrasal verbs. Anyway, guys, um, thank you so much for showing up. I really appreciate your time, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.